scientists, it's good to see you again. I'm scientist Renee, and we're going to continue exploring Waves Energy and Information Chapter 3, Lesson 4, Seeing Sound. And today we're going to read a book about people who see sound. So before we do though, let's think about the question we've been investigating. Why are some sounds different from other sounds? Well, I remember we talked about how loud sounds can be, and that was their volume or their amplitude. And then we also talked about the, the pitch of sounds, and that was their wavelength. That was how squished together the sound waves are. So sometimes, sometimes sounds are louder or quieter, and then sometimes sounds have a higher pitch or a lower pitch. And you know what's interesting is that we can't see sound really, or you know, sound is impossible to see. We can't look in the air and see my voice going towards you. <clears throat> but there are ways that we can actually see sound. So I want you to think about for a second, how have we seen sound in our investigations? Now, you might have thought of ways I didn't think of. I thought of the spring model that we made um, with the slinky. I thought of the, um, the sim that we used where we could see all the particles bouncing around and we could see the wave being drawn. Um, I thought of all these different visualizations that we've made. So even though we can't see sound, there are ways that we can visualize it. And so remember that the reason why we're trying to investigate sound is that we're marine scientists and we're working to find out how a dolphin calf can hear his mother's call. So to help us figure it out, we're, we've been investigating how sounds are different. And to help us study this, we've been using these visual representations of sound called waveforms. And I can see some lines. This one, do you think that's the amplitude or wavelength? What about this one? Which one do you think shows volume? Which one do you think shows pitch? Now hopefully you could tell me this is my wavelength. It's showing the length from one wave to the other. This is my amplitude. It's how tall it is. And over here on the left, the blue arrow, that's my, uh, that's my pitch. And then the orange arrow is my volume. So we're going to read about people in kinds of jobs that visualize sounds. So we know marine scientists probably have to visualize sounds because we're talking about the dolphins and we're going to learn about some different ones and some different jobs where people have to visualize sound. So we're going to read a book called Seeing Sound and it describes four jobs in which it's useful to visualize sound. And so if you have your notebook, you can go to page 60. If you don't have your notebook, that's fine too. The directions are really simple. So we're gonna fill in this table as we read. And just the directions say, as you read Seeing Sound, record some of the reasons why people visualize sound in their jobs. Remember to look carefully at the visual representation in the book as well as reading the text. And so as I read, what you're going to do is either on page 60 or again, if you don't have your notebook, that's fine too. You're just gonna figure out, or you're gonna write down, why do scientists visualize sound? Why do audiologists visualize sound? Why do doctors visualize sound? And why do sound engineers visualize sound? So I'm gonna go over to the book. Let's go ahead and start reading. Seeing sound. So we see working with sound, scientists, audiologists, doctors, sound engineers, visual representation of sound, ooh, it's a lot like we've been talking about, and the glossary, which shows us vocabulary from the book. Working with sound. Many people work with sound. Sound engineers work on recorded sounds like music and movie sound effects. Audiologists work with people who are deaf or ha are hard of hearing. Many scientists investigate sound waves as part of their work. Doctors can even use sound to find and treat disease. Interesting, I hope we learn about that. 
So when people go to the movies, they hear sound effects. Sound engineers work hard on those sound effects. People who work with sound often need to visualize sound. Even though sound is invisible, they need to find ways to see it. Waveforms and other visual representations of sound let people see sound. Seeing sound helps these people do their jobs. I'm gonna zoom in here. Oh, this is interesting. These are di different visual representations of used by people who work with sound. It's pretty cool. I haven't seen stuff like that before. So the first one that we're gonna read about is scientists. Many different kinds of scientists investigate sound. For example, some scientists study how animals use sound to communicate. Those scientists need to understand the properties of sound. They need to understand how animals make and hear sounds. The scientists also need to know how sound travels through the air, water, or ground around, around the animals. So this scientist is recording frog sounds for an observation investigation. Interesting. This scientist is looking at visual representations of underwater sound. Some scientists investigate how the sounds we make affect animals. For example, sci a scientist might study how certain sound machine, how certain machine noises will affect animals living nearby. Visual representations help scientists investigate sound. Different sounds have different properties. Scientists can see the properties easily in a visual representation. So I see like a pretty interesting looking screen here. It looks like a bunch of different blobs of colors. And then I see some different looking ones here. That makes me wonder if this is visualizing sound. So if you have your notebook out, this is a good chance to go to page 60. So why might scientists visualize sound? That's a great thing to record either on your sheet of paper or in your notebook. And you can take a quick pause of the video and then come back when you're ready. All right, welcome back. So now we're going to talk about a different group of people who use, who visualize sound. We're gonna talk, oh, actually, I'm sorry, first we have to wrap up our scientist page. These scientists are investigating sounds that dolphins make underwater. They are looking at visual representations of the sounds. And look, we even have like even different representations of sounds right here. I'm seeing like different colors kind of in some squiggly lines. And now we'll go into audiologists. Sometimes adults make mistakes reading too. But the great thing is, we can always just try again. So audiologists. Audiologists work with sound to help people who are deaf or hard of hearing. For example, audiologists give some, give some people hearing aids. Hearing aids make sounds louder and easier to hear. And so I wonder if this girl is possibly getting her ears examined to see if she needs hearing aids or maybe just to check her sound uh, or her sense of hearing in general. To find out who needs help, audiologists give hearing tests. One of these tests is called a pure tone test. A pure tone is a sound with a constant pitch. I know that word. We talked about pitch a little bit earlier, and I remember pitch is how close these waves are together. It's the wavelength. And the caption says this waveform shows a pure tone. During the pure tone tests, Audiologists play different pure tones one at a time. People listen through their headphones. They raise a hand or make another signal whenever they hear a tone. Sometimes people cannot hear certain kinds of tones, such as high-pitched or low-pitched sounds. Pure tone tests help audiologists find this out. I know I've had tests like this before. I put on headphones and every time there's a beep, I have to raise my hand. Audiologists use visual representations to help make sense, come on, help make sense of the hearing tests. They may show these visual representations to the people who took the tests. The images help people understand which sounds they can hear. So 
Let's read the caption here. An audiologist made this visual representation. It shows the pitches that a person heard with each ear. That person can hear different pitches with the left, left ear and the right ear. Interesting. So it tells us we've got some different graphs here. Sometimes audiologists make visual representations of the sound of someone talking. These visual representations show changes in pitch. People can see the differences between images, between the images. This helps them understand sounds better. Visual representations can show the patterns that spoken words make. Words that sound the same make the same patterns. For example, representations of vein, the things inside your arm, vein, like a wind vein or weather vein, and vein, caring about how I look, look alike. Words that sound different look different in visual representations. So I see vein, vein, and vein, and yeah, those look pretty similar to me. That makes me want to visualize what it looks like to say a different word than vein, like banana. I wonder what it would look like on this chart. So now is a great time to pause and on your piece of paper, write down why do audiologists visualize sounds? When you're ready, come back. Welcome back. Now we're gonna be talking about doctors. I think I see a person's foot right there. Many doctors use sound to help them take care of patients. They don't do this by listening. Instead, they use sound waves to make images of people's insides. What? These images let doctors see problems inside the body. Doctors could even use sound to treat their patients. Sometimes a harmful growth forms inside a patient's body. In some cases, sound waves can help. The doctor sends sound waves through the patient's body. The sound waves help shrink the harmful growth and get rid of it. Man, that's cool. Let's zoom back out so we can see the whole picture. This doctor is looking at an image made with sound waves. The image shows the inside of a patient's body. That's pretty cool. Let's see if we can zoom in on the picture. So sound waves are showing us inside someone's body. And again, here's another great point to pause and write down doctors. Why do they visualize sound? And we've got one more. We're gonna talk about sound engineers. When people listen to a song on the radio, they want to hear the music clearly. When people watch a movie, they want to hear all of the talking and sound effects. Sound engineers make sure people can. Sound engineers work with musicians to record music. They work with actors and sound effects people to record sounds for movies. Then they work with the recorded sounds to make them sound even better. To do their job, sound engineers have to know a lot about the properties of sound. Let's look at the image first. So I see somebody sitting at a computer. Man, a lot of controls here. He's got headphones on. And the caption says, sound engineers don't just listen to the sounds they work with. They also use visual representations of the sounds. Because they are working with recorded sounds, sound engineers can do something special. They can use computers to change sounds and make new sounds. To do this, sound engineers look at visual representations of recorded sounds. Then they change the visual representations and tell a computer to play new sounds, play the new sounds. By changing the visual representation, a sound engineer can change a sound. Wow. They could fix like a lot of, it sounds like they can change even the music that they hear by telling a computer to change it. That's pretty cool. A sound engineer may need to change the amplitude or volume of a sound. For example, cartoon voices are all recorded in small rooms called sound booths. The voices shouldn't sound like they're coming from a tiny room though. A character who is far away in the cartoon scene should sound quieter than a character who is close by. A sound engineer can make the voices sound like they are coming from different places. Sound engineers do this by changing the amplitude of the voices on the recording. They work with visual representations of the sound waves. 
By reducing the amplitude of a sound wave, a sound engineer can make a voice quieter. Increasing the amplitude of the sound wave makes the voice louder. So even though they're all in the same booth, the voice actors in the sound booth, the, cart the sound engineers for the cartoon can make those characters seem like they're coming from different places. Movies have a lot of different sounds together. There may be talking, music, and sound effects at the same time. Sound engineers need to make all those sounds work together. They want people to hear every sound. This is cool. Visual representations let sound engineers look at many different sounds at once. Looks like this sound engineer is, they, it looks like there's some sounds going on down here, more here, maybe a different sound here, more here, and more here. That's a lot to have to combine and make sure that they work together. Sound engineers often need to change the pitch of a sound. Sometimes a singer sings the wrong pitch, too high or too low. After the sound is recorded, a sound engineer can look at a visual representation of the sound. The engineer can fix the pitch by changing the sound's wavelength. When the song is played back, the pitch will sound different. The sound engineer makes sure the music sounds good to the listener. So we've got an original recording and a corrected recording. A sound engineer fixed the pitch in this recording. Can you spot the areas that changed? Ooh, I spot a few. I wonder if you see the same ones as I do. Now, last time, please pause and write down the job of sound engineers and why they visualize sound. When you're ready, come back. Just a couple more pages for us. So visual representations of sound. Scientists, audiologists, doctors, and sound engineers all use visual representations of sound to do their job. Jobs, waveforms and other visual representations of sound let them see sound in new ways. We've got a scientist listening to recordings of dolphin sounds and an audiologist testing a girl's hearing aid. This book just shows a few ways that people can see sound and use it in their work. If you look around, you might find other people working with sound. And now we can see the sound engineer at work. So a few words that we covered in here. Amplitude, audiologist, communicate, engineer, investigate, listener, pattern, pitch, property, visualize, and visual representation, along with wave, waveform and wavelength. And if you want to read any of those definitions, you can pause the video and take a look. I'm gonna stop this video and we're going to start another one in just a moment, so I'll see you in a second.